unbothered, unleashed, and totally unscripted. It's Beyond the Roar with football head coach Eddie George. Welcome back to another great episode of Beyond the Roar. I'm on with a very special guest, our running backs coach and my dear friend and former teammate at The Ohio State University, uh, Peppy Pearson. Welcome yes, to the sir. show, man. Yes, sir. It's great to be here. Yeah, so I, I know it, it is, brother. Yes, sir. So. Yeah, so we, we go way, way back to yeah. the uh, 90s, what, 94? 94. 94. Yeah, I was your host. Yes, <laughs> going, sir. To, yes, sir. going to Ohio State. <laughs> and it's funny how things work out, man. Um, I, I, I never thought I would get into coaching. I knew that you, once you stopped playing, you became a coach, got into it, and uh, coached for well over 20 some odd years. Um, very familiar with your pedigree and yeah. where you've coached and so forth. Um, never did I think that we would be on the same staff doing what we're doing. Absolutely. You know, so just tell me real quick, what, what inspired you to get into coaching after you finished playing? Well, after I finished playing, I just uh, still had the, the passion and the desire to you know, be around the game of football. So, you know, I decided after my playing days were off, I, I decided to go into coaching. So um, there was an upstart program in Columbus, Ohio, which I had uh, gone back to uh, at Ohio Dominican. And, uh, you know, I was at a camp that summer uh, in 2000. And uh, the coach that was going to be the head coach there saw me at the camp working with the kids. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to be a part of the staff. Mm -hmm. and, that's when it started. So, um, but that was my way to give back. So, uh, you know, I kind of in 2000 started coaching and haven't looked back. How was it? Was it a difficult transition for you when you were done playing? Like when to hang up the cleats? I, I know for me, it was it was difficult. How was that process for you in terms of making that change and, and finding fulfillment in that? Well, you know, it was a difficult uh, change for me. You know, because as an athlete, as as athletes that played at Ohio State, you know, you have in mind you're going to play such odd years in the mm -hmm. NFL. And uh, for me, it didn't materialize like I wanted it to. But uh, that's why I wanted to still stay in the game. So uh, really coaching helped me transition. Uh, it helped that transition for me. And it's still, you know, I still had that passion and that love for it. So that's what helped getting into coaching. What lessons can you take from your playing days that help you now become a better coach? Well, it's uh, the lessons that I learned are from the coaches that uh, coached me, Coach Tim Spencer at Ohio yes. State. Um, you know, I learned some things that, you know, I may have done differently than him, and uh, I learned from him mm -hmm. as well. So I carried some of the things that I had been taught uh, into my coaching career and then kind of tweaked it a little bit to who I am my personality and you know it ended up working out and again i've been coaching for over 20 years so just real quick you can give me an example of what those things you tweak because I, I he was my coach too and, and right, we were right. the same bad for the guy i know how you coach so i'm just curious right. to know what are those things that you tweak a little bit that you that would have done differently well that you, you know it, it's crazy um how it all works because you know coach spencer was um you know, he had that fire in him. If you didn't do what you were supposed to do, he was going to let you know about oh, it. Right. And he was going to let a ho the whole 100,000 fans know about it as well. Um, so he was, you know, he had that. He was going to yell at you. He was going to scream at you. Um, call you out your name. Yeah, <laughs> call you out your name. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I needed that as a as a uh, player at that time. So he, I needed that, and I needed for him to do that to pull out the best in me. Um, but one of the things I wanted to change was, you know, I'm a little bit different. We have different demeanors. So I'm more, I look at myself as more of a teacher. Okay. So, you know, it, that's, that's how I do it. I don't have to, you know, yell at you, call you at your name and this, that, and the other. I'm trying to teach you uh, in order to make you a better player. So, you know, that's one of the things that are different. Uh, everybody motivates in their own way, but that's the way I choose to do it. Yeah, I've seen you in action on both sides. <laughs> you definitely have a lot of Tim in you. <laughs> the, 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 I mean, right. as long as you're getting your, your point across, no, I, I definitely, right. I definitely resonate um, with your with your coaching style because Tim to me was uh, one of my best coaches because he taught you know the nuances of the position 
and everything without the football in terms of blocking, um, understanding pass protection, understanding defenses, um, uh, you know, running routes, um, everything that you need to do to be an every down back. Absolutely. And how to run behind your pads, and you know the one thing I used to hate um, at Ohio State was the damn gauntlet. We had to run through <laughs> right, right, the yeah. whole season, <laughs> you know, every every week, every single week. But I appreciated that because it helped me get my pad level down, it helped me explode through tacklers, and become a tougher running back. You know, so it was it's remarkable. Um, now on the recruiting trail, we both have um, an affinity for the position, and we play the position. We coach coach the position um, specifically, what do you look for in a running back? Well, you know, uh, the things that I look for is, um, the first thing I look for is when I'm looking at film and stuff, for me, people might think this is crazy, but I'm really looking for their ball security because mm-hmm. that's the, the number one priority as a running back. But I am looking at how they hold the ball as a high school player mm-hmm. because that's important. You know, obviously, once they get to the collegiate level, that's something that, uh, you know, a fundamental that I would have to teach them to be better at. But I look at that. I look for fast twitch. So whether they can get in and out of cuts quickly, do they have lateral quickness? Um, in their offense in high school, do they catch the ball? Did they catch the ball out of the backfield? Did they block? Right. You know, where, you know, where they, um, did they have to block at the position? So there's a lot of different things that I look at. Um, so it's, it's not as simple as people think it is. Uh, but you, you want to get those main characteristics of a running back and then understand that they're not coming to you as a whole, you know, first round draft right. pick, um, that you're going to have to mold them into to be a great back and be an overall back. Well, but, uh, let's stay in the same vein. Now, if you had to create the perfect running back, if you had to build a running back from the ground up, from the feet up, right? who would have the feet? Who would have the legs, the power? Who would have the hips? Right. Like hands, vision, right. intelligence. Who, who who would that be? The perfect running back. Yeah. With a guy that's we currently have, or what I would think. What you, know, you would think of all the great running backs in the history of the game, <laughs> talking college and right. professional. All right. So, Even high school. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, let's just take me and you for instance. I yeah. I would combine us because. You know, us two together. You got you had the size. Mm-hmm. I was a little shorter. So if you put us at about six one, mm-hmm. um, six one, long arms. You're a little bit taller. You're a little mm-hmm. longer um, with the frame. You know, so we got the frame to work with. As far as the toughness and the mentality, we would have that together. You got to have a certain dog mentality about you that yourself and myself had. Um, you got to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield. Have soft hands. We both were able to do that. So if you combine yourself and myself, you know, obviously, you you know, you're a great running back and went on to, you know, uh, have an illustrious NFL career. Mm-hmm. But if you combine us both, I had I had speed, I had quickness, you had the power and the toughness. Mm-hmm. You combine that, man. Then, I, you know, I had a little speed. The, now, yeah, you, no, you definitely had the you definitely had the speed. If you, when you got out, nobody was catching mm-hmm. you, and that's mm-hmm. that's what made you different. So if you combine the two, I, I think you would have a Outstanding running back. Yeah. If it never were me, I probably <laughs> would have, in terms of feet, uh, Eric Metcalf's feet. Oh, yeah. He was all right. He was fine. Incredible feet. I would have Earl Campbell's legs. Yeah, true trunk. Trunk. power. True trunk. I would have Barry Sanders' hips. That's right? my all time favorite, right? Yeah. There. I mean, his, his hips were just right. ridiculous. His twitch. Sick. Yeah. Um, I would have Derrick Henry stiff arm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a beast stiff arm, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, he throws whole men. <laughs> yeah, right, arm. right, yeah. right. Um, Speed-wise, I would have to say Bo Jackson speed. Bo Jackson. You can throw, you can throw E.D. in that. E.D., Eric Dickerson. You can throw Chris, Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson. Oh, my goodness. Uh, O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson had that stride. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, tenacity, heart, without question, Walter Payton. Oh, absolutely. He's the best at, at that. In terms of football IQ, I would have to go with Marshall Falk. Okay, yeah. he Because he knew, I mean, he everything. Played everything. He played receiver. He could do everything out of the backfield. Yeah. Catch the ball, block everything. 
And of course, you know, you got the other great running back with Jerome Bettis. Oh yeah. yeah. Jerome, I played with Jerome for a little bit, so he, he and he had good feet for uh, for a big man. He had great feet. Inflexible. Oh man. Oh yeah, dude, he, he was he was he nasty. was he was a pleasure to be around. That was that's a good dude right there. You know what? J- Jerome is one of my dearest friends. We yeah. have the same agent. Oh, okay. And we still keep in touch with each other. He in fact he got me uh, loving the game of golf. Oh, okay. okay. You know, because he's he always told me, he says, Ed, you know, we're going to do business. You got to get a club in your hand. I'm right. like, man, get out of here. I'd rather go, you know, chase something else. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and I'm not chasing the white ball all around the golf course. Right. It's boring. But as I've gotten older, I, I start to see, like, oh, I get it now. Yeah, yeah. They, these were the CEOs are the decision makers, the guys you want to do business with. Absolutely. And they don't want to deal with somebody that can't play the game. Right. right <laughs> you know? Right. I <laughs> so, got some catching up to do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. all good, though, man. Right. So let me ask you this. Um, got to Tennessee State. Uh, you've been at Marshall, like you, you mentioned. You've been all over the country while Youngstown State in terms mm-hmm. of coaching. Um, you coached a lot of running backs. Mm-hmm. What do you love about this running back group here at Tennessee State? Well, I think I got a good young group. Uh, starting with uh, Starling, uh, he, you know, he's a back that's very versatile. Okay, he, you know, he has a lot of upside. You know, he, he came here, uh, and I could immediately see some things that I could help him out that we could help him out with, uh, in regards to his uh, pass pro, in regard to his uh, pad level, things like that. So things that can make him the best overall back. Uh, so you know, I was I've been excited to work with him every day because he's improving every day as you. As you can, as you can see, as the season uh, prolongs itself, uh, Jalen. Uh, so Jalen Rouse, he, you know, he has the speed that we're looking for. I like him. Uh, he's gonna stick his, his his face up in there and pass pro, and uh, you know he does a great job, you know, catching the ball out of the backfield as well. And then and then you have uh, Trey Boone. So Trey Boone's a walk on, but uh, he's gonna give you everything he, he has. He does a tremendous job on special teams. Uh, and and he's a he's a great Run teammate. Yeah. yeah, he's a great teammate. He does everything you ask him to do at, at the position. So you know, I have a good uh, a great young group uh, with star leading the troops, and uh, you know, I'm excited to work with them and see uh, how far they can go over the next few years. Yeah. And you know, Mike Mitchell also he's a special project. Uh, they're yeah. they're constantly trying to mold and, and build Absolutely. great strength and speed. He's been mm-hmm. at a power five school. Yes. Um, just working on his his mentality. Absolutely. Yeah, working with Mike. Yeah. Uh, working with Mike, he has you know he has great speed. He has those things. He, he can jump high. Uh, you know he you know came in a little injured, so we're trying to help him through that. And I think going into next year, you know maybe he can be more of a um, a role player for us and do yeah. some special things for us. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I got a good solid group, and uh, you know possibly looking to bring in maybe one more guy, but. We got a good solid group. Yes, we do. A good, a good future ahead of us. Yes, we do. All right, so now that was the second quarter. Pep, we're going to go into halftime. So this is where I ask you a Tennessee State fun fact. Okay. All right, so you ready for this? Uh, okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. go. How many OBC Offensive Players of the Year does TSU have? I think we had... That we had a, a total of four. Ooh, ooh, plus one, five. five. Yeah, oh, yeah, one yeah, yeah, one yeah, off. yeah. That's, I, that's I had excellent. Zeta, I had Starling, I had the offensive tackle. Uh, really? Yeah, I had uh, our fullback who's not playing; he's hurt right now. Um, and then the fifth one, I, I, I lost. Oh wow, that's yeah. that's pretty good. That is that's pretty good. So. All right, so third quarter, third, fourth quarter, we're going to get on the personal side of things, get to know who you are, take okay. off the coach's okay. hat for a minute. Yes, sir. With that. Now, if you could take only three items to a desert island, what would it be? Three items to a desert island. Okay. Mm-hmm. Excuse, excuse me. That's a desert. I'm <laughs> If you can only take three <laughs> items to a deserted island, oh, okay. it's all right. <laughs> what would they be? What would they be? Oh, oh man. Well, let's see. Deserted island. I would have to take. I would have to take some food or or water to survive. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So that's that's two. <laughs> I would have to do that. Water, food. Oh man, this 
Is this a trick question? No, nah, no. Nah, is this a movie you take? <laughs> You could take a book, you can take uh, a fan, you can take a bed, you can nah, take I, w- I wouldn't take a book, I would take something deserted. I, I'd take something for protection because you not, don't know what's out there, so that's a part of me. All so right, so that's it. So yeah. food, water, and a knife. There you go. Wow. There you go. See, I would <laughs> I would probably go food. Okay. Right? Right, right. Wine and a woman. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, hey, I, that's I, well, my wife. Excuse me, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> not just any woman. Well, I not I, just any right, woman. I, I thought that goes without yeah. being said. Obviously, right, I would right. want my wife. That's right, my but, wife. Let me just know, clarify but, that. Uh, right. Yeah. All right. Here we go. On to the next clip. <laughs> if you had to choose to live without one of your five senses, what would you give up? I would give up. Uh, I would give up taste. Yeah, I would give up taste. Because I, I need to mm. be able to see. I, I need yeah. To, yeah. I would Ch- give up taste. Taste is underrated. Like, you can't enjoy. I, I would rather not enjoy the food that I'm eating. I would have my, all the rest of my senses. Yeah. Mm. Plus, yeah. I don't need to eat that much anyway. So, I that's you. why I said taste. But smell, how I smell? No, I got I to gotta have my smell. You got to have my smell. I can smell it. Might not so, be able to taste, taste it. But, right. you know. I, I can dig it. All right, man. If you were an animal, what animal would you be? I mean, I'd be a lion. I'd be a lion. Why? Because you know lions are perceived to be like the king of the jungle. You know, so I, I you know, I look at myself as an alpha male. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, absolutely. No absolutely. Uh, if you could live in a TV show or movie, what would it be? <laughs> TV show or movie. I would have to say it. One of my all-time favorites is the comedy. It's the Martin Show. So yeah. you know that's yeah, that's yeah, an all-time yeah, one right yeah, there. Yeah. Like I don't care if it's 20, 30 years of yeah. you know from seeing that show, it will always make me laugh. You watch your BT? Mark, like- yeah, Mark. I used to have the collector's items. Like oh, I used really? to have the disc until some I let somebody use them. They never got back. Favorite episode is what's up? Ah, favorite episode of Martin. Ah. It had to be one of the ones with, well, obviously Shanae when he played Shanae, yeah. but uh, the Kung Fu one. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, Kung yeah, Fu yeah. ones are all time. <laughs> when he, you know, he, he's he thinks he's like, yeah, he's at the bank. <laughs> he thinks he's about to kick somebody's butt, and he ends up getting his butt kicked. Man. Oh, man, that that kills me every time. That's, so, a, that's a classic. <laughs> that, is, that is a classic. <laughs> um, what is your most treasured memory? My my most treasured memory, hmm, it, it it it's really a combination, and it has to do with football. It's a combination of two things: uh, uh, my experience at Ohio State, the relationships that I made there, um, you being one of them. Um, so I, I always cherish uh, that uh, my time there at Ohio State. Uh, professionally, as a football player, it was uh, you know I got a chance to play in NFL Europe mm-hmm. uh, back in two thousand. 2001, and uh, you know, I ended up scoring a winning touchdown in the 2000 uh, World Bowl to win it. Wow. And so, over in uh, Dusseldorf, Germany. So, that was the probably besides the Rose Bowl we played in at Ohio State, mm-hmm. and we won that against Jake the Snake. Uh, winning that World Bowl was, was special because uh, they put the ball in my hands that last drive, and I, you know, I finished off with the winning touchdown. Man, so, so. tell me how that felt when. You guys won the World Bowl. Oh yeah, we won the World Bowl. How so. how that feel? Oh, it was uh, it was amazing. Fifty three thousand uh, fans there. Um, it, it was amazing. You scored a winning touchdown. Um, you know, it was really a passing league, but at in that particular game, we couldn't pass the ball, so they put it in my hands and to finish it off like that. That was like for me the most uh, right. memorable moment. Yeah. Uh, professional for me. So, what was the celebration like after afterwards? Oh, it it was wild. You know, you you, you celebrate with the team, the owners. Um, you know, and and really, when I was over in Germany, they treated me like Michael Jordan over there, wow. just because I scored the winning touchdown. Wow. So, you know, they did paintings and murals and stuff like Yo, that. Oh, that's and, awesome. Um, I still have some of that uh, artwork as well. So it, you know, it was a great experience to to be able to go over there and, and say I went. Over Man, I wish they still had uh, NFL Europe. That yeah. was a great experience yeah. for a lot of guys. We went over there um, as ambassadors for a couple games. Yeah. And had a yeah. really good time in Amsterdam and so forth. Absolutely. All right. So that being said, coaching, you played the game of football. 
uh, deserted island, you would um, have just the water, food, and life. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. simple, simple as it comes. So right. what truly makes you happy? Uh, I mean, what truly makes me happy is family. So, you know, I, I love my sons. Uh, you know, I have uh, two sons and a daughter. So London and Roman are my sons. Michael's my daughter. Um, you know, I have two grandchildren now. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter wait, had wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 you know, but but family is is the thing for me. It, it really is, and uh, you know, I love my boys, and they're both. Uh, you know, uh, well, my my youngest son is going to come on a visit here yes. this weekend, so I'm excited about that. My, my oldest son, London, uh, he graduated from Youngstown State last year, and he's looking to possibly get into coaching. And um, mm-hmm. and then Michael, she's you know doing her thing and uh, working and everything back in Columbus, so. You know, I you know that's that's really what's important to me, and obviously my wife. So, you know, I'm. I'm I still feel the fact that you're a grandfather. Yeah, man, I that, it's, it's right. Age on me, man. I'm just. <laughs> yes, sir. Whew, okay, yeah. <laughs> man. Um, all right, moving on. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna get into our two minute rapid warning, rapid fire questions. Ready? Right, all right. Cool. Um, would you rather text or talk on the phone? I'd rather talk. It's more personal. Favorite holiday? Um, really, it's Thanksgiving because of the family thing I mentioned. I, I love being around family during that time. Okay. Invisibility or super strength? That's tricky. That's tricky. I I, I would say super strength. Yeah. All right. Name a word that starts with the letter Q. That's the Nice, <laughs> nice. Bro. All right, and we'll close out with this one. Mm-hmm. Your favorite dessert. My favorite dessert is uh, apple pie with uh, with uh, what is it? The vanilla bean ice cream. The on vanilla top. bean. So warm, hot apple pie. <laughs> with Very pie. specific. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Another great episode of Beyond the World with myself and Coach Peppy Pearson. Stay tuned for another great episode coming up soon. See you later.